Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can change the colors in your video by using the HSL secondary tools in the Lumetri color panel. So I've got a couple example clips on the timeline, one with this nice distinctly colorful flower and another with this city shot, just a basic shot with different colors in it. So before we begin working, you can actually just click on these clips and open up the Lumetri color panel. You should find the HSL secondary tab second to last and you can actually begin adjusting directly on the clips. But another way that you can work is by highlighting your project media bin and creating a file new adjustment layer so that we can have a little bit more flexibility. You can just drag these adjustment layers on top of the tracks where the clip is and work on those and extend those over several cuts if you want. So in this case, let's just start adjusting. And in the HSL secondary panel, you have a few options to do. So basically what this allows you to do is set a key color and then create adjustments on it. So you can slide around these sliders to kind of find a color that's in your image. However, I find it a lot easier to just grab the ink dropper tool that they have and pick a color from within the image. So if we wanted to change the color of this flower, I could click the ink dropper tool there. And then under this drop box, you can change the way it's showing you what it's selecting. So let's check mark it on. And you can see so far, this is what it's selected, certain parts of the flower. You can make it color on a gray background, color on a black background, or a white and black mask, if that's how you prefer looking at it. But there's a few things you can adjust. So now we can pull these sliders so we can make it creep into other color ranges if we need to. We can make sure it picks up the rest of the saturation. But you can see the more range we give it, the more it starts to pick up little bits of the background. You can adjust the lightness that it picks up. But another cool thing that you can do instead of trying to manually tweak it is grab your plus ink dropper tool, which will allow you to click and drag around an area and it'll add all those areas into consideration. Then you can grab your minus ink dropper tool if you want and see if you can minus out some parts that you didn't want. However, it's kind of a fine balancing act and don't worry too much if there's just some small bits in the background. So the next step is the refine options. You can denoise things if there's a lot of noise in your selection, and you can also give it a bit of a blur if you need. Be careful giving it too much blur because then things don't really look that precise or realistic anymore. So after you've fine tuned the hue range, the saturation and the lightness range so that you have a pretty good selection of the object while not getting the background, I'll turn off the mask because I know what we're selecting now. And now we can begin color correcting it. So you have your one basic tint wheel here, or you could switch to the three wheels so you can adjust the midtones, shadows, and highlights separately. So let's say we want to make this flower look more blue. Let's just pull all of the tones in the flower to be a lot more blue. And it's kind of giving that strawberry effect where your eyes can still kind of tell it's supposed to be red. But you can see how we're able to individually make this flower pop in color or kind of give it a bit of an adjustment if we want. You can also adjust some basic color correction like the temperature. So make it more cool or warm in temperature. Give it a tint. When you're talking about white balance here, this would help. And you can adjust the contrast, sharpness, and saturation of it. So if you wanted to just make a certain piece or thing in the video pop with saturation, you can do that. Or if you wanted to just desaturate a certain thing in the video, you could do that as well. For example, if we wanted to desaturate the background but leave the flower saturated, we could just create a new selection that only involved the background and did not include the flower so that we could have kind of a pop of color effect and adjust the HSL until we get a nice or decent selection. So that's the first example of how to use the HSL tool and that's kind of a functional example of how to change the color of an object or make it a little bit more vibrant. But you can also use it for some more fun and creative methods as well. So for example, in this city shot where there's not really one individual color that needs changing, you could use the HSL tools to create kind of cool, surreal looking colors. So I could grab the ink dropper and kind of ink drop some of the sky reflection in the background. So you see this is what we're selecting. I'll add a little bit of blur to it so it's not so gritty. And then you can do cool things like make the blue sky reflection pink and make it brighter or darker and kind of play around with some cool visual elements that you might use in a more abstract way. Also, when you're talking about small elements here, like someone's t-shirt or dress, if I wanted to change the color of this woman's dress using the HSL tools, I can kind of select just her dress 
or try to fill in some of those other areas. And then we could use some adjusting to make it a little bit more red, make it pop more. But you could see that this will start to affect everyone else's clothing as well. So it's an interesting way that you could use it to add maybe an abstract pop of color as well. So that's the basic rundown I have for the HSL secondary tool. It's a cool way to isolate a color and then change it. If you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure you leave a like on it below and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, go follow me on Instagram at Show for live streaming, sharing pictures. You can reach me on there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.